All right, welcome to the first lesson. I'm gonna show you how to create a basic tween. Just sit back and watch, and at the end, I'll show you how to get the class notes and how to actually do this for yourself. Let's get going. All right, so let's get to creating our first animation. In CodePen here in this demo, I have just a very simple image here, okay? This is my buddy Fred.svg, okay? And right now he has a class of Fred applied to him. So that's all we got in the HTML. The CSS is minimal, just setting a background color. And in the JavaScript panel is where we're going to have our fun. All right, so what we're gonna do to create our first animation is we're going to access that GSAP object and we're going to create a two animation, all right? So for a GSAP.2, we need to tell it what we're gonna be animating as far as the object we're gonna be moving around. In this case, it's our buddy Fred, and then also all the different properties we're going to be animating. So the first one we put in is the target. So right now, I could just put in image as a string, and that would select every image on my page. And I'm going to use a comma to separate the parameters where we have our vars object, where I can put a series of property and value pairs. So if I wanna to animate to an X of 400, that's how that would look. Let's give this a run and see what happens. And voila, Fred moves to an X of 400. Now what you might find curious is that I never set a duration anywhere, but somehow this animation does take place over some amount of time. Well, what's cool about GSAP 3 is that there's a default duration of 500 milliseconds or half a second. So if you want all your animations to be that duration, you never have to specify that duration. Well, you know what? We're going to give our own custom duration here by typing in the name duration, colon, and you know, maybe I'll make it three seconds long. And as you can imagine, this animation will be a bit longer as he animates to an X of 400. Now, I also wanna show you that in order for this animation to happen, what GSAP does behind the scenes is it updates an inline style that sets a transform value on Fred and it repeatedly updates it at 60 times per second. So let's make this duration here, I don't know, maybe like 15 seconds long so that when I run, I have enough time to jump over here, right click, say inspect, and in DevTools here, you're going to see that my buddy Fred has his transform style being updated with a translate 3D value. And when the animation ends, you'll see that it pops over to translate with X and Y values, all right? During the tween, that translate 3D gives a little bit of a performance boost. But I just want you to know that behind the scenes, this inline style is being updated. Now, we're not stuck with just animating to an X of 400. I could do also a y of 200, I could do a scale of three, and let's see how that looks. We're not gonna do duration 15, let's just do three seconds so that we have time to see what's going on. And what do we got? Aha, you'll notice that he scales up really nice. This is an SVG graphic, so it's vector and it's gonna scale and be all nice and crisp, and Fred is happy as a slime ball. There's really no set limit to what properties you can animate. Generally, as long as they're numeric CSS values, you're good to go. Um, but it's smart for performance to stick to transforms like rotation and things like skew also, okay? So let's just hit run and we're gonna add a little bit of rotation in there and there you go, all right? Smooth as butter and crystal clear. So a few more things I can do with this animation. Now, right in here, for the target value, I'm just selecting the image tag. If there were multiple images on this page, all of them would animate with these properties. So it's probably smarter to use something like a class or ID. So I wanna show you that Fred has a class of Fred. Makes sense, right? So what we're going to do is, instead of just using image, we're going to say, you know what? Let's do dot Fred. So with this string value, you can put in any CSS selector that you want here. You could pass in jQuery objects or references to that HTML element that you make up on your own using things like document get element by ID, query selector all, yada, yada, yada. For now, the easiest thing is just to use these string selectors like this. All right, so before I go, let's just do a little bit of a recap on this lesson, all right? 
I showed you that to create a basic tween, we're gonna create the tween using the gsap2 method. And a basic example of that is it's gonna be gsap.2, and then we're gonna specify the target, which right now we're using a CSS string selector to select everything with a class of Fred. And then there is that vars object where we have our property and value pairs that tell us what value we're going to animate the X and Y properties to. We talked about GSAP having a default duration of 0.5 seconds or 500 milliseconds. And what I didn't show you is that you can change that using gsap.default, okay? Uh, what you can do is send in an object with all the default values that you want. There's a link to that in, in the notes provided with this course. We talked just a little bit about what you should be animating, and basically for the best performance, you should animate CSS transforms and opacity because they benefit from hardware acceleration. So those are things like X and Y, which in the CSS world would be translate X and translate Y, but GSAP makes it much easier for you by just letting you set X and Y. Uh, there's rotation, rotation X and rotation Y. GSAP is great at 3D. Uh, scale X, scale Y, or if you want to set them both to the same value, just use scale. And you can also do skew X and skew Y. Now, just because these are the most sort of performant properties to animate, it doesn't mean you can't animate other things. In fact, GSAP can animate any numeric property that you throw at it. So you can do width and height. You can do top and left. A little note there though, is that in order to animate the top and left, you must make sure that the position in CSS is set to relative, fixed, or absolute, or else those values aren't going to be applied or do anything. Property like border radius, which is normally hyphenated, needs to be camel case. The same thing would go for background color. Uh, GSAP is extremely capable of animating a multitude of color values, whether they be hex colors, RGB, HSLA, and more and more and more. Uh, you can also do viewport height and viewport width, and again, pretty much anything you can throw at it. So we just talked about a basic two tween, but since this is the first lesson, I wanna bring your attention to our notes. In the downloads associated with this course, you're gonna find GSAP3 Express Notes, which is just a PDF document. And what I did was I just made sort of top level notes so that you don't have to write stuff out while you're watching. So basically everything I did review just now is going to be in this document. Uh, and after every lesson, what you should do is go over the notes that I provide because chances are I might cover something I don't even cover in the lesson, all right? So definitely check it out. Um, most lessons are gonna have an exercise for you to do. I'm gonna keep the instructions very simple. So for this one, we're gonna tell you to open the code pen at this location. So let me just click on that. Yes, I'm going to allow. And then the start file will open up. It already has GSAP loaded. You'll just go to the JavaScript panel and in those notes, let me switch back over, you'll see add the following code. So for this lesson, I would recommend that you type out this code into the JavaScript panel and give it a run. I'm also going to be providing links and more. So for stuff that I think that you should actually dig into the docs about, um, I'm gonna provide you links. And don't worry, I have a whole lesson on using the GSAP docs coming up in just a little bit. Get cracking on that first exercise. And again, keep these notes handy because they could be packed with a lot of little stuff that I just don't have time to cover in the class. All right, once you're done with the exercise, watch the next video.